Good afternoon, guys. Uh, I'm Jared. And first, I'm going to be responding to some points made by Sam. And then I will be extending the claims uh, that me and Ryan have come up with. So first, uh, <coughs> to review. Sam says that 79% um, of male owners and 80% of female owners said owning a gun made them feel safer. Well, of course, they're going to feel safer, obviously. They're the ones with the gun uh, out in public while everyone else doesn't have one. And um, legal gun owners is such a small portion of the actual population. And um, some studies show that, I'll address some later on, that it shows that <coughs> um, the population actually feels less safe knowing that there are people out there with guns and they don't have one themselves. And then also Sam uh, mentions that gun owners are actually like very responsible and uh, trained. For example, though, California only requires about like 16 to 24 hours of training when obtaining a firearm. How can we expect any person to actually deal with the amount of responsibility that comes with that and potential consequences uh, when getting a firearm when we have like our military and our police that train year round with these weapons? And then to further extend our claims, so our first the first claim, which was a significance claim, was allowing possession of handguns causes society to be unsafe. And to extend this, I'll use evidence from concerning juvenile violence and youth violence. <coughs> so first, in an article called Reduce Youth, youth Involvement with Guns, Drugs, and Gangs, it says a trend analysis of juvenile homicide offenses shows that the mid since the mid-70s, the, the number of homicides which no firearm was involved has remained fairly constant. However, homicides of juveniles involving a firearm has increased threefold. It goes on to say during the period 1976 to 1991, firearms were used by 65% of juvenile homicide offenders. 44 of the 65% use handguns. Um, it continues with, in 1990, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention surveyed a nationally representative sample of 9th to 12th graders students about the time that they had a weapon such as a gun, a knife, or a club during uh, in the last 30 days. One in 20 students indicated that they had a <coughs> firearm on them and it was usually a handgun. And then the same article says, stricter legislation and assault weapon and illegal handgun bans are approaches almost unanimously suggested by researchers as ways to limit accessibility of guns to the youth. And now to um, address youth homicides, <coughs> an article written by Josh Sugarman talking about various incidents of homicides involving the youth. Um, the first one he talks about is the deadly shooting of Jordan Davis, who was 17. He was shot by Michael Dunn, who was 45, at a Florida gas station in a dispute over loud music. Um, this is just one example of 29 incidents since May 2007 where victims under the age of 18 lost their lives in a non-self-defense shooting as a result of private citizen legally allowed to carry a concealed loaded handgun in public. Um, another example of this was teenager Brandon Kohlenberg. Uh, who was shot and killed with a 357 Magnum handgun in Missouri, July 2009, by a man who mistook him for another youth who had robbed the shooter on a bus two months prior to that. And then uh, one last example would be teenager Olivia Bunkert, who was shot and killed by her father in a murder-suicide in North Carolina in November 2009. Now to address or further ex extend our inheritance claim, which was most people aren't equipped to handle the responsibility of possessing a handgun. Um, I'll use evidence of how possession of handguns can influence suicide and is a hazard to children. So to address suicide, the article Suicide is Forgotten in Campus Carry Debate. Um, Jeffrey Swanson, a medical sociologist at Duke University, argues that the high uh, lethality of firearms as a means of suicide ought to give policymakers um, make them consider how the academic and personal stress of college can raise the odds of student attempting to take their own life. And then um, in an article titled Michigan CCW Holders Suicide Rate Higher Than Michigan's General Population, we learned that from July 1st, 2007 through June 30th, 2008, 
29 of Michigan's 164,793 concealed handgun license holders took their own lives for a concealed handgun license holder rate of 17.6 per 100,000. From July 1st, to 2000, July 1st, 2008 through June 30th, 2009, 28 of 182,000 concealed handgun license holders took their own lives for a rate of 15.3 per 100,000. In comparison, in 2007, the general population suicide rate was only 11.3 per 100,000, and in 2008, it was 11.7 per 100,000. To address uh, how they're a hazard to children, uh, in an article written by Tommy Christopher, uh, he gives a few examples, uh, stories. So the first one is in Tampa, Florida. Three-year-old Jadarius Spates found a 9 millimeter handgun in his uncle's backpack and accidentally shot himself. The uncle, 29-year-old Jeffrey Walker, who authorities say holds a concealed weapons permit, um, was arrested on charges of culpable <coughs> negligence. And then uh, another example is two-year-old two Addison Tussie uh, shot, him, shot and killed herself at, after she found a handgun left in the front console of the family SUV as the family was preparing to leave a restaurant in Kentucky May 20th. <coughs> lastly, three-year-old Julio Segura McIntosh fatally shot himself with a gun he found in his family's car when he stopped for gas in Tacoma, Washington in 2012. The father put the gun under his seat, got out to pump the gas, the mother went into the convenience store, and then the boy climbed to the front of the seat, found it, and accidentally shot himself. To extend our solvency claim, which is banning guns will reduce violence, I'll use evidence concerning non -caring, the non-caring public opinion and how concealed carry won't prevent crime. To address the non-caring public, an article stated in April 2010, a poll of registered voters across the United States found that 57% feel less safe after learning that concealed guns may lawfully be carried in public. In another study um, of 1,649 students at 15 colleges, 79% uh, said they would not feel safe if others had uh, weapons. And then to address how concealed carry won't prevent crime, an article giving data on homicides involving concealed carriers say Concealed handgun permit holders are responsible for at least 849 deaths not involving self-defense since 2007, including 29 mass shootings that killed 139 people.